Skyjack's log. New Horizon. April 10th. Entry 3. No matter how many times we come to this damn jungle, it just seems to always get worse. Had five of the crew down with bites to some kind of giant bloodsuckers. Some idiot nearly got themselves eaten by a giant plant. And don't even get me started with them Celestia damned leeches. I swore the fucking things know how to get everywhere. And that's not even the worst part. The damn Stripe, who was supposed to be leading us, got up and tried to abandon us all in the middle of the night. Luckily, no pony ever gets past Raven. She got him good. I sincerely hope that whatever it is he keeps rambling about is worth all this trouble. We didn't come all this way for some stupid zebra rambling about a piece of shit curse he's willing to just up and ditch us for to avoid even stepping near it. I still think it's a load of horse apples. There ain't no place in this Celestia forsaken jungle that can get any worse. Still, we had to drag him kicking and screaming up to the front of the temple. The whole place was huge, not to mention completely overrun by the jungle. Most of the main entrance looked like it had collapsed a long time ago. So we had to make our way inside through a small hole behind one of the pillars. Good thing we have some of that fire salt to spare, though. Otherwise, there's some doors we might not have never made it past. As for the inside of the place... Well, it's definitely nothing new. It's dark, smelly, and covered in creepy vines. Half the walls are just full of the funny-looking inscriptions that no pony's ever gonna bother to read. And the images? Heh. <laughs> well, I can say that I've been to a lot of places in my time, and I ain't never seen nothing like what was carved into the walls. All seems to be something to do with that star mumbo-jumbo you always hear stripes going on about. I can say one thing, though. There ain't no stars down here. The page is, place is pitch black. At least, I think it is. Some of the others keep saying they saw something in the darkness. Don't know what, just keep saying the same thing. Moved into the corner of their eye. Others say it's just a flicker. Like a candle or something. I know I ain't not seen nothing but stone and tunnel, but that was before we hit the mother load, though. A great big room, right underneath the mountain, or so the stripes said it was, when he wasn't rambling to himself. Still, treasure wasn't like anything we'd found before. The room was full of these weird crystal pillar things. Each one of them was sat in a stone pedestal, and all of them were arranged in this weary ring around something in the middle. Once again, can't say I'd ever seen anything like it before. And then again, right there and then, I didn't care. I was one of the first to climb down and take a look. I swear each stone, those shards, looked like they were made of diamonds. Every one of them had its own weird glyph thing floating over it. Raven said it was some kind of frost talisman, and that if we take any of the things, we should make sure they stay frozen. Of course, that meant we had to transport the crystals while they were freezing cold. So that was fun. Almost got frostbite in the sweltering jungle for Celestia's sake. Not only that, but the stripe was not happy. He kept rambling on about desiccation, and the fact that we were all doomed to die before some pony had the sense to knock him out. Only thing I know I'm destined for was a pocket full of bits when we go home. I think that was what was going through every pony else's mind at the time, too. Raymond didn't seem all that happy about it, though. She was too busy looking at the thing in the middle of all the treasure. Don't get me wrong about the captain. She's one of the greatest any of us could ask for. But she's not shy on the superstitions, either. She's had some pony tossed her in the brig for even... Uh, scratching a mirror, after all. It was the way she was looking at the thing, though. It didn't look right. I didn't get a clear view of what it was before we left. It looked like some kind of big throne to me. Couldn't see through the dead vines. Damn things were growing all over it. The best I can say is that it just looked way off. And I'm glad we left when we did. The horrid set of eyes was fixed on Fluttershy as the Pegasus began to rapidly hyperventilate. No pony had the nerve to condense what had just happened, nor did any have the courage to believe it was even real. 
but the black substance was now coated in the middle of the room, and the absence of Pinkie Pie forced each one of them to consider what they had just witnessed. One thing was for sure. None of them had heard a scream quite like the one Pinky had cried before rushing from the room. It made even the blood of the bravest among them run cold. Then, after a long moment, and still silence was broken as Rarity made her way cautiously around the black mass and tried to comfort the terrified Fluttershy. Seconds later, Rainbow Dash edged towards the shattered orb and slowly withered black slime. Wait, don't go anywhere near it. Twilight said sharply, raising a wing to block Rainbow's path. Rainbow fixed the inky mass with a stern look as it began to wilt into a dusty gray sludge. She made no effort to move past Twilight. She's right. We don't know any idea what that stuff is. Don't want to get on any pony else. Applejack backed up Twilight, as both ponies studied the withering mess from a distance. Starlight cautiously made her way up to Twilight, Spike shivering furiously as he peered over his head. The unicorn's thoughts ran wild, and she could see from the mix of feelings that welled in Twilight's eyes, she wasn't the only one who was terrified. Well, Rainbow Dash snapped impatiently, ushering the others to look up at her. And that thing just attacked Pinky! Why are we all just sitting here? She pointed towards where Pinkie Pie had disappeared. Thoughts once again shifted within the minds of Applejack, Twilight, and Starlight. Opposite the trio, Fluttershy merely stifled back tears of shock. Rarity didn't seem to be faring any better, but she valiantly held back her own horror for the sake of the mare she was trying her best to comfort. Rainbow Dash, please stop shouting, the white unicorn scolded in a whisper, her gaze shifting nervously to the gloom about her as if she were afraid something would hear her. Rainbow Dash frowned. She appeared almost angry. Pinkie Pie was just attacked by some kind of strange thing, and you're telling me I should stop shouting? We need to go and find her now, she declared bluntly. You're right, Sugar Cube, but Rarity's right too. Shouting won't get us nowhere. Now I'm say, some of us go out and find her while the rest of us make sure this damn thing don't get any worse, Applejack suggested, nodding to the shattered sphere. Y you mean, split up? AJ, are you insane? Every time any pony splits up, it never ends well. Spike exclaimed in panic, raising a claw to his head fearfully. Applejack shot the dragon a slightly disapproving look, but it was clear she understood what he was trying to say. Every pony else didn't seem to like the idea any more than Spike did. However, and the longer they were silent, the more impatient Rainbow became. Within moments, she was ready to take off after Pinky alone. Then Twilight spoke first. No. I think we should all stick together, and we find Pinky before this gets any worse. Well, that's not bad enough already. Didn't you hear her? Rainbow asked in frustration. Yet the remark only earned a wide range of disapproving fright looks. Rainbow? I know how you feel. Starlight, Rarity, and I will light the way. Applejack, just make sure that we don't miss anything behind us. Twilight instructed, the situation molding her into the leader, as she levitated Spike onto her back. You don't leave my side, okay? She told the baby dragon firmly. Don't worry, Twilight. I'm staying right here. He responded timidly, clinging close to her mane. Immediately, her instructions were followed, as Rainbow Dash darted out of the room and every pony began to follow. Rarity nodded as the alicorn approached, her blue magic sparking to life. The moment the alabaster mare trotted away from Fluttershy, Twilight wrapped a hoof around the pegasus. Nevertheless, the sobbing mare could just repeat how sorry she was. Don't worry, Fluttershy. It's not your fault. We'll get her back, I promise. Twilight told her sincerely, all the while starving off the idea that those words were not entirely true. And that's right. And don't worry about it yourself, Sugar Cube. You couldn't have known that would happen. Applejack added, as she helped Fluttershy to her hooves. It still doesn't mean it didn't. Fluttershy whimpered under her breath as both Twilight and Applejack winced. Hey, are you guys coming or what? Rainbow called from the door. By Celestia, I swear if she shouts one more time, I'm going to give me a heart attack. 
Rarity grumbled, recovering from the shock as she pressed a hoof to her chest. Twilight and Applejack offered the white mare a sympathetic look before moving out of the room after Rainbow. Rarity wasn't far behind, leaving only Starlight to glance at the now almost stone-like mass that had moments ago attacked her friend. Her mind flashed into what she'd seen in the cabin, and she gulped. Surely hoped she'd been right, that it was merely the forest that had ensnared the bones. Pinkie Pie! Pinkie Pie! Hey! Where the hey are ya? Rainbow Dash called into the dark, expansive maze of ruined halls and corridors as every pony trotted behind her. Nothing but a distant roar of the storm outside responded as it echoed through the long emptiness like a call of some great beast. Shadows filled every corner and the gloom loomed everywhere beyond the reach of the magical light. The darkness swarmed about them as if they were hungrily awaiting its chance to strike. What had once been unsettling was now nothing short of terrifying, and it didn't seem that any pony was afraid to admit such a thing. Something awful had happened to one of them, that much was clear, something that no pony understood. Still, they were wandering the ruins for what felt like hours, and there was still no sign of Pinkie Pie. Despite their previous visits, none of them truly knew how large the castle's interior was, and only now did they all seem to reconsider just how expansive the vast maze of tunnels and halls actually were. Standing on either side of the walkway were faded paintings, each one of them a ghostly portrait of a pony who seemed to watch their every move with a looming eye. In the magical light, that illusion only seemed more prominent. Every pony just hoped it was their minds playing tricks on them. Occasionally, the darkness was torn apart by a bright flash as lightning shone in through the rain-strewn windows, followed swiftly by the angry boom of thunder. Pinkie Pie! Come on, Pinkie, where are you? Rainbow Dash called out, but this time her shout did not go unanswered. There was a shifting ahead of them, and in the ghostly light, one of the wall tapestries shifted. There was another bright flash of lightning, and in the wake of its brief image, it offered every pony what was left wondering whether the sickly-looking black figure they glimpsed was real, or just another trick of the mind. It almost seemed to look up at them with a weeping expression of black tar, but before any pony could even consider the struck image, however, it was consumed by the shadows once again. Pinky! Rainbow shouted out quickly before moving to dart ahead. She was abruptly pulled by, uh, to a halt by Applejack as the farm pony grabbed her and yanked her to the floor. Whatever was ahead of them gave another weak shuffle, and then fell utterly silent as Rainbow turned towards Applejack with frustration. Hey, what gives, AJ? She asked bluntly. Spitting Rainbow's tail from her mouth, Applejack responded in a firm tone. No pony's going running off alone. Rainbow crossed her forehoos with a huff as her brow furrowed. Meanwhile, every pony else seemed to be agreeing with Applejack. Fine, but I'm only staying because you guys are too chicken to go by yourselves. Rainbow stated as she trotted forwards, every pony else close behind her. You know you can't admit y'all are scared. You ain't gotta hold it against ya this time, Sugar Cube. Applejack offered, but Rainbow just shook her head. I'm not saying I'm not scared, but I'm scared for my friend, not myself. Rainbow Dash conceded firmly giving the farm pony a stirring glare. You're not the only one, Rainbow. I can promise that. Twilight assured her, but once again the words did little to soften the terrified demeanor in Rainbow's eyes. Quiet, please. The sooner we find Pinkie Pie and get out of this dreadful place, the... Rarity interrupted, yet her timid words were cut off by a shocked yelp. Every pony turned to the white unicorn in an instant, horns and hooves ready for anything that may leap out from the darkness only to see Rarity frantically shaking off one of her boots. But as the shimmering purple attire hit the floor, no pony relaxed. Covering its bottom was a splash of squirming black slime that writhed as it tried to gnaw its way through the purple rubber. Rarity backpedaled from the boot in alarm as the black slime swiftly began to wither. What an equestria is this darn stuff? Applejack shouted. The light smell of burning rubber filling the air as the slime slimes slizzled and finally died. I have no idea, but every pony watch your step, Twilight responded, 
panning her horn's light forward to reveal a trail of vague black hoof prints upon an aged carpet. Pinky! called Rainbow again, as she peered off to where the prince vanished into the gloom. Rainbow Dash, that is it. I've had enough of your... Rarity cried in panic, only for her words to wander off again as the distant sound echoed from the darkness. Shush! All y'all! Don't you hear that? Applejack asked, monitoring for the quiet with her hoof. Everypony's ears stood tall as their eyes scoured the shadows. Then that sound drifted forward, the sound of a weary moan. It sounded strained and wet, as if a sore throat clogged by a flu or cold. The most unsettling of all, however, was the fact that it sounded very close. Both Twilight and Applejack were the first to creep forwards before they were swiftly joined by Rainbow Dash, as the Pegasus encouraged Fluttershy into the air and away from the ravenous trail of black slime. The trail went on for a few more meters on the corridor. Each step seemed to become more sluggish, until whatever had made them looked to be desperately dragging itself across the floor. With each passing step, the stuff seemed more fresh and alive, as if it could not survive on its own for more than a few minutes. Then there was another garbled moan, and every pony paused and just shifted in the gloom. This time, the movement was sluggish and rough, the breath rasping and watery. Just ahead, the prince took a sharp turn to the side arch, and slowly every pony crept up to it. Who or what was inside gave another weary moan, and it was swiftly followed by a pained shriek. An acidic smell filled the air. And then, those that didn't gag at the stench perked their ears up, as a sound akin to many wet rags being torn in two bubbled up from within the room. Then there was a horrific pain, a cry of pain, as if abruptly silenced by a sickening loud splash, then a soft thud as something hit the floor. This time there was no stopping Rainbow from rushing into the room, and both Twilight and Applejack rapidly followed her. Nor did the others think twice about it, if only to avoid being left alone in the darkness. Starlight and Rarity came in behind the others, only for their hearts to stop and their innards to churn with a sickening disgust. One of the room's crumbling walls was marred with a gruesome black stain that bore the faintest hints of red. The substance that was splayed out across the walls as if it had erupted outwards in one great burst, like some kind of horrific zit that had spouted from the stone itself. Almost every piece of furniture close to it had been covered with a fresh coat of withering black slime, Yet, that was far from the worst part. Splayed out on the epicenter of the horrid expulsion was the mangled form of what appeared to be a pony, now reduced to naught but a ragged black rag of tattered meat clinging to frail bone as it was pinned to the wall of the black slime. Anything that may have been identified, what it once was, was gone. Fur, skin, even blood. The innards had been corroded into nothing but inky blackness. Every pony gasped in shock. Fluttershy fell to the ground, unable to even weep as she desperately tried to look away. This time there was no rarity to comfort her. Instead, the white unicorn was overcome by disgust and vomited into a corner. She didn't look like the only one who was struggling to keep down their latest meal. Starlight herself had to swallow a bile churning in her gut, and straightened as she trembled violently. Twilight covered Spike's eyes with her wig wing, as her own eyes bravely studied the gory black mass. Rainbow Dash was forced to the ground beside Applejack, as both of the acclaimed Iron Ponies were hapless to comprehend a gruesome sight before them. Twilight? Applejack finally asked in a voice that was a few levels above a faint whisper. Please tell me you don't think that's... The Alicorn looked back solemnly. No. Celestia, damn it, that's not her! Rainbow lurched forward, only to be pulled back before any of the slime could touch her. Let go of me, AJ! She snapped as she turned to face the farm pony, still holding her tail. No, Rainbow. Now you listen here. This ain't no kind of game. This. And this. Applejack's words fell flat as she looked at the smear of the tears that were in her friend's trembling magenta eyes. What's wrong, AJ? Applejack demanded dangerously. 
Before any pony could respond, however, there was another shift in the room. A light. Animalistic clicking sound to the left of the slime fountain. Every pony froze. Before twilight slowly crept forward towards it, horn lowered to attack. Then she jumbled as the stained furniture shifted with a loud bump. Within seconds, Twilight turned to the far right corner of the room and turned it into a lavender bonfire with her magic. For several moments, there was nothing other than flickering of flames. Then there was another inequine call and slithering movement under the furniture. The blackened tables and chairs shuddered loudly as whatever was beneath them dashed out for the door. Fear summoned by another set of magical assaults from Twilight but, once again, all they could do was mar the walls with scorch marks. Whoa, Twilight! Applejack finally said, placing a hoof on her panting friend's shoulders. The frustrated Olicorn looked back at her friend with shimmering tears in her quivering eyes. And before she could say anything, Rainbow Dash flew over the edge of the room and called out, Hey, look at this! She pointed to the carpet with a hoof, where a long trail of sleek black slime snaked its way out from the covering mass and out the door. Its worm-like movements were far from that of any pony. Come on. We gotta get the hay out of here and figure out what to do, Applejack murmured, as her eyes nervously found the slimy trail. You've got to be kidding, AJ. We can't just go... Uh, what about... I can see that, Rainbow. What do you want me to do? The farm pony snapped, gesturing to herself firmly before the Pegasus could finish. Applejack, as Rainbow Dash's dangerous glare returned as she looked back at her friends at a sickening mark on the wall, there was a mix of emotions more turbulent than the thunderstorm raging outside behind their eyes. Look, both of you are right. We can't stay here, and we can't just let whatever it is stay here either, Twilight suddenly declared. Why not? There's plenty of dangerous stuff out here, Starlight offered. Fear demanding she do everything she could to get out of the situation as quickly as possible. Twilight shook her head. No. Whatever this thing is, it's not from the Everfree Forest. We have no idea what it could do if we just leave it here. This... She reluctantly pointed a hoof to the blackened wall, and her words faltered. This stuff could completely overrun Ponyville. Maybe even all of Equestria as we know it. She finished weakly. So what you're saying we all have to do is... Applejack began, but Rainbow Dash was swift to finish her words for her. Destroy it. Sounds good with me. At that, the brash Pegasus made for the door, tears breaking her fearsome, determined look as she tried to maintain a brave facade. Applejack looked at Twilight, sadness in her own eyes as she reluctantly nodded. Come on, you two. Stay close. She told the otherwise silent Fluttershy and Rarity as she followed Rainbow Dash. Neither of the pair seemed willing to argue as they slowly followed. The best Twilight could do was offer Fluttershy a sympathetic glance, even if her expression was marred by tears. Go with him, Spike. I'll be out in a second. Twilight asked. Without a word, the baby dragon leaped from her back and moved to the door. Starlight's eyes followed him as he went. Then she looked at Twilight. Twilight? She finally managed to put a hoof to her mentor's trembling shoulder. Twilight, I'm sorry. Twilight didn't respond for a long moment. We can't let this stuff get out. Pinky wouldn't want this to happen to any pony else. We... She began, her horn sparking to life as her words trailed off. It wasn't hard for Starlight to see what Twilight had in mind, and without a word she nodded. Her own horn began to spark with a vibrant blue fire. The best either could do was to close their eyes as the fire burst from their horns, and a mass of black slime was burned into nothing but ashes, along with a little of it that was left of their beloved friend. Every pony, watch your step. Fluttershy, Rainbow, first sign of anything dangerous, you two get up high and out of harm's way. Every pony else behind me or starlight so we can put up a shield spell. Twilight instructed firmly as she moved every pony cautiously through the dark corridor. No offense, Twilight, but I'm not just going to run away. 
Rainbow Dash responded firmly, flying a few inches ahead of everypony else. For all the leading experience she had, Twilight knew how futile it was to tell the Pegasus otherwise after what they found. She was having great difficulty keeping her own emotions in check. Her mind, uh, never mind the fact that the rest of them... Nevertheless, there was no way she'd let anything like that happen to anypony else. And right now, that demanded far more of her attention than any of the memories of Pinky's gruesome fate. All she knew for sure was that she had to find whatever it was that had taken her friend, and stop it before it could escape and attack any pony else. I don't think she's telling you to run away, Rainbow. Please just listen. Applejack asked, her eyes fixed upon Rainbow Dash. The cyan pegasus spun in the air to face Applejack, hovering close to the farm pony's face as she did so. Just listen. Something did that to Pinky, AJ. How many other times has anything like this ever happened? She shouted in frustration. You think I don't know that? I saw just plain as you saw what happened. And I ain't saying I'm any less eager to find out what the hay this is and put a stop to it before it happens to any pony else. Applejack responded, eyes narrowing as she pressed her muzzle to Rainbow Dash's in a snarl. Both of you be quiet. We just need to stick together. There's no point in fighting. Twilight stepped in. Both fears and frustrations flared into her words, but were met with resistance. For Celestia's sake, you're all acting like foals. Rarity snapped as she too entered the verbal scuffle. Will you all stop your ridiculous squabbling and please listen to Twilight? Spike just put his claws over his ears and pressed his face into Twilight's mane. Meanwhile, Starlight and Fluttershy just watched the argument with growing concern. The latter had only just managed to break free of the wave of guilt that had washed over her. That wasn't to say that the remorse wasn't still lingering at her every thought, but for now she knew she had to be strong. She caused this. The blind kindness she showed that horrific thing had resulted in the horrid death of her friend, and now she had to help fix it. Hey, Fluttershy, are you alright? Starlight asked weakly, trying not to think about the futility of those words. No. No, I'm not alright. Fluttershy responded simply. Starlight just nodded, knowing there was nothing she could do to tell Twilight that would resolve her guilt. All she could do was express her sympathy with a small smile, the likes of which was undetermined by mounting fear. Then she moved towards the others, her dread demanding she try and stop the arguing so they could all move on as soon as possible. Left alone just behind their squabbling friends, Fluttershy looked down at her hooves, tears rolling down her cheeks and falling to the worn, old carpet. With a timid little shiver, the Pegasus gave a small sniff. Despite all she was doing to stay strong, there was no way she could stop thinking about Pinkie Pie. There was no way she felt she had the right to not think about her beloved friend either. After what she'd done, she couldn't help but feel to remember she was an insult. It was like missing, misusing the memory of the pony she'd murdered. At that thought, her head stopped, and she released a pained gasp of sorrow. Far more tears streamed down her face. Then something shifted in the corner of her eye, almost as if the shadows themselves were moving instinctively. Her eyes shot to the source of the movement, and her sadness receded as her heart began to race. Ahead of the others were the, entra were the entrapped in their argument to see the small flicker of blue light that flashed down one side of the corridor, its glow like that of a star in an empty night. Um, girls, I think there's... She murmured in a faint whisper, but her meek voice was hopelessly overwhelmed by the shout. In the gloom, the pulse of light flashed again. This time it was far more akin to the bright glare of a lightning bolt. Yet there was no thunder, just the silent darkness as the light faded away. Fluttershy made her last effort to get her friend's attention. Meanwhile, the light seemed to creep further away. Then, with a bright flicker, it died altogether. Straightening, Fluttershy bravely put a hoof forwards, then another, swallowing her fear as she looked for the source of the glow. She could make this right. She had to make this right. Maybe if it was some kind of monster, it would be like a cockatrice. Maybe she could reverse what it had done if she made it right. Regardless, this idea 
filled her with a little confidence as the light ahead failed to show itself again. Instead, the air became cold as a small wind blew through the ruins, carrying with it a strange sound. At first, it sounded like the air was whistling as it moved. Yet, then it began to warp and twist into a different sound, like unlike anything she'd ever heard. The closest thing she could compare it to was a ghostly wail, heralded by a series of sharp whistling clicks. The sound seemed to snake around the silence, as if it were some kind of dark serpent on its own right. It bore a hissing depth to it, and resembled something far more tangible than a simple spirit or specter all the while offering no clue as to where it was coming from. Shivering violently, Fluttershy glanced back the way she'd come, the shadows of her friends still arguing silhouetted before the far wall. Then she caught a whiff of a vile, rotting smell, and something wet against her hooves. Before she could even think, she jumped back with a sharp gasp of shock, rushing at her hoof frantically to get whatever was off. Every aspect of her terrified mind told her it was more the black slime, Yet there was no smell nor pain in her affected limb, and finally she looked down at it. In the dim light, the clear slime shined. Yet it was nothing more than that. Certainly no black goo trying to devour her as it had done Pinky. The relief that found her was only minor, however, and she glanced ahead to see something on the floor before her, the likes of which glistened like a wet rag. Once again, it wasn't black. It was a weird, fleshy color. Nor was it any kind of black slime. Approaching tentatively, Fluttershy studied the thing carefully. It was almost familiar, like the transparent scaly skin of a snake or a lizard after they'd shed, only wet and smooth. Then her eyes widened as the realization hit her. Her head shot up and she turned to gallop back towards her friends as fast as she could, only to stop in her tracks. In the gloom before her, a set of three blue lights slowly moved almost like a glowing fish swimming slowly through the darkest ocean. Fluttershy gulped, yet the neon light was captivating. It was strangely beautiful, like a hopeful lure at the end of a dark and terrifying tunnel. Slowly, the light swam and shifted around Fluttershy's head, each movement deceptively slow and calm. The urge to run back to her friends faded as the light drew her eyes away from their distant shadows, and back to the darkness in which she had first glimpsed it. Two of the magnificent blue orbs flickered out, and all she could do was think about how majestic the final bastion of light looked as it sat calmly in the air before her, like a mesmerizing lure. Then it coiled back swiftly, and flashed forwards with an impossible speed. All that Fluttershy could do was blink by the intense blue glow and scream. A burst of red-hot pain racked her whole body, it sting like a flash of a hundred cracking whips. Then, it all faded, as the light abruptly 